God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon. And today we are discussing handling financial pressure in the wilderness. When you are going through what we call that wilderness experience, that deserted place where everything seems to be not enough, I want to encourage you, friends, to hang in and hang on. Do not give up. Up. When you are in financial pressure, that's the time to become resourceful. That's the time to become um, um, aware of all of your talents, all of your skills, everything about you, friend. You got to focus so that you can observe what you have in your hand. What What is in your hand? Just like he asked Moses, he said, Moses, what's that in your hand? You have to do an inventory to make sure that you are exhausting everything that you have at your disposal so that you can begin to make it from day to day. And I want to encourage you, friends, the wilderness is grueling when it comes to money because many people, and I mean many friends, have turned back on God because of money. This is why many people will not endure once God calls them to himself and he is dealing with you, especially when you have the call of God to preach, to teach, to exhort, to tell uh, your fellow man about Jesus Christ and that they can be forgiven of their sins. So when you start feeling just it's just no money. You're living with people that's causing you psychological harm. You're living with people who started out excited that you moved in. And now three months later, they, they, they won't even speak to you. And you live inside of that dwelling. You, you started out on a good foot. And now you, it seemed like you walking on eggshells around this person or these people who welcomed you. Some of you are in ministry and God has been gracious to give you under understanding of many things, but you are struggling financially because everywhere you turn, there doesn't seem to be any relief. There doesn't seem to be anyone who understands that you are his servant. Oh, friends, I have been there and I'm going to tell you it's not easy, but it's doable. The Holy Spirit would constantly give me these words. God is faithful. He would tell me to have courage. And that's what I want to tell each one of you, to have courage. God is faithful. And I want you to understand, whatever you do, don't go back. Don't do anything that would compromise your relationship with God. Don't steal. Don't lie. Don't let no one entice you to manipulate, to get ahead or get around certain things. Hold your ground. For me, the Lord encouraged me to utilize my gift of crafting. He had just called me from a successful salon business that I had. I built that business from the ground up. I had a beautiful home. I had just bought this home and God, not not now, but back then when he called me, I had to jump ship. I gave up everything, my credit, my cars, my everything, because Jesus told me to come and follow him. And before I knew it, friends, those doors with family slam shut tight because they could not understand why would Sharon give up this brand new home? She makes money. She's never had to borrow anything from us because I made money. I didn't need to be a, 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 a borrower. I was a lender. Now, here I am in the wilderness with my oldest son, Joshua, at the time. And let me tell you, friends, it was grueling. Once family, they began to ignore you. They And you can ask them for money, but they ain't sending it. <laughs> Mine didn't. It was like... You just gave up that salon bit. You know, they thought I went cuckoo. <laughs> it's like, you crazy. I ain't saying it. Uh-uh. You better go get some wealth affairs. <laughs> go get some wealth affairs. <laughs> Welfare. But my family refused 
to, to be a partaker of any of what I was doing for Christ. None of it. And, and let me tell you, friends, once you deal with that type of rejection, you got to guard your heart that you don't become bitter because these are spiritual matters. You are trying to keep your heart in a peaceful place to preach, to exhort, and plant seeds of faith to your fellow man. So those that are not in Christ are not going to understand. But I want you to know, friends, I dug deep and before I knew it, I began to utilize my gift as in arts and crafts to survive. And what I did in my wilderness, I started, God blessed me. Keep in mind, for me, I'm a writer. Jesus gave me or God the Father gave me an anointing to write. And that's why all the books are free on my website because in my wilderness, he wanted me to stay focused, to departmentalize my thoughts so that for a time such as this, I can encourage you to go to the website and download all of those free books that I've written for your edification. But I could not do that if I still ran my salon business because my salon business took up all my time. When I was not in the salon, I was um, cleaning and prepping and getting ready for the next week. It was too much for me to to be able to handle hearing his thoughts to departmentalize to become a writer. So what I did, I, by the blessing of God, stumbled upon what I call my courage key rings. Um, this is what he gave me, understanding how to make these. At one time, y'all remember those beads that came out, the Pandora beads? Everybody was buying them. Ooh, they was like a big thing. So I found these at a wholesale price, and God blessed me through prayer and meditation. God, show me how to make these key rings because everybody's wearing bracelets. Would you show me how to make a, a, a key ring, God? And he did. And let me tell you, friends, I would package them. I designed my own labels. And before I knew it, I was out in the marketplace selling, we'll call, I was hustling. The word hustle means to be resourceful. I was hustling, friends. And I can't tell you how much money God would bless me. Every week, I always made just enough for, for all of the basics in life to eat, to make sure we we were able to stay somewhere, even it, for a while it was in a hotel, but I was making it. In the meantime, I was able to keep my heart and my mind on things above without the pressure of corporate, without the pressure of my former salon business. And this is why you have to endure these financial pressures because what you're going to be and what he's making you to be for the edification of others, you got to pass this test with money and pride. Oh, friends, I was, I was embarrassed many days in my flesh, totally embarrassed. Because me and my oldest son at the time, we had to go to the marketplace. And it's like, oh boy, I hope I don't see nobody I know down here. Hey, would you like to purchase one of my uh, Courage Key Rings? <laughs> and you just hope that it's nobody you know. I went through it, friends. I was, ooh, I was humiliated many days. But as my wilderness continue, continue excuse me, for years, slowly but surely, God not only showed me how much pride I had, but how I was also being ungrateful because he gave me these talents and now I'm using them to exchange for currency and he was blessing me. And so I want to encourage you, friends, that when what you think is, you know, this is not me, you know, oh no, mm, I'm not asking, I'm not. Friends, if you can't handle the shame in the wilderness, when he finally brings you out, if you can't handle it, once he brings you forward or out or however he chooses to deal with you, when scandal, when defamation of your character, when someone is attacking you, if you, if you can't handle that wilderness where no one knows you, knows your name, when people do start to know your name, you, it'll crush you. See, see, all of my attackers, and some of you watch me every day. How you doing? 
I got enemies, and you all watch my videos, a couple of you. You're nothing but enemies of Jesus, not me, because I preach holiness on this channel. I preach knowing Jesus for yourself as your Savior. I preach that you must know and have a relationship with God the Father. I preach holiness. And because I was already shamed in my wilderness... Now that I'm before the people on a regular Monday through Friday schedule that God has told me to upload one to three videos, 10 to 15 minutes every single day. Now that I'm here being attacked on every side, some of you are so bold. You email me your, that's y'all crazy. <laughs> You email me your garbage. I don't read it. Once I see you a devil and you on the dark, I don't read your emails. So don't send them. You're wasting your time because I'm a busy woman. But now that I'm here, you, you can't shame me. You can't, you can't shut Sharon up by trying to call me all these evil, wicked names and uh, laying all this defamation to my character. I already went through that test in my wilderness. And so, beloved, the same for you. Once you have gone through that humiliation where you got to do things you don't want to do, you have to assert yourself and have courage to do what you have to do. When he brings you forth and you know that no one but God has walked you through that wilderness, friends, your little attackers is like, go on with that. You know, it just roll off like, you know, they say the water on the, on the duck's back just bounce off because you already been through it. That's the purpose of the wilderness so that you can stand in the midst of attacks, all types of whatever that has to come your way. You only get stronger as you endure. You have to endure. Don't go back. Don't do anything to compromise. Do the right thing. Keep asking yourself, what is my talent? What do I have in my arsenal of talent that I can use to make money? Friends, you got to be resourceful. Go on through it so that you can, because when we, when we suffer for Christ, he said, you are blessed. You're blessed. But the wilderness, oh friends, that money thing, don't you give up. Shh. Let God have his way. Make sure you're looking at every area of your life where you might still be trying to hold on to the lust of the eyes, the lust of your flesh, or most common reason people go back on God is the pride of life. Oh, I remember when God had me purchase this little, actually someone helped me purchase it because my van was stolen back in 2014. I'll never forget it. I had never had a car stolen. My van just disappeared. <laughs> and, and when they found it, it was totally vandalized. And I was like, oh, God, you got to I need a car. Within three, four days, I had a very precious group gave me a significant amount of money to purchase me a brand new car. But it was a used car. And it was a it was it was old, but it was it was in great condition. And all I kept thinking in my flesh was, you know, as they say, shake my head. I was like, wow, Sharon, you have come a long way from that suburban lifestyle. <laughs> Cause I would have never bought that type of car, but that's all God provided. <laughs> I got me a nice ride now though. <laughs> but my point is, I had to go through that friend. And when I bought that car, I had enough to pay cash for it. It was rough. But I learned not to despise the provision of God. Because during that wilderness season, I come to learn that real prosperity is spirit. It's maintaining joy. And an attitude of gratitude that no matter what's going on, no matter who rejects me, no matter who talks about me, no matter who, what, what, it don't matter. As long as you and the Father are good. As long as you live holy and stay pure and clean, you are living the abundant life. 
And yes, you may only have one pair of shoes. And yes, you may not have anywhere to lay your head. But Jesus told his disciples to tell Herod, the foxes have holes and the birds have nests. But the son of man had nowhere to lay his head. My friends, he or she that has an ear, let us hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us. Be grateful, friends, no matter what. Be grateful. God bless you till next time.